All right, Sharon, thank you so much. And thank you for bringing up the issue of Africa's, um, um, you know, the youth, uh, you know, the youth demographic that is supposed to be a benefit to Africa and population expansion, which also should be a ban benefit that is being seen more as a, a challenge. But uh, talking about the the issues you've raised, one issue, again, many have talked about is the issue of um, um, where the carrot is being dangled in front of African leaders, aid. Aid becomes a very big issue. And recently, uh, um, um, a parliamentarian at the ACP has said something, he said the treaty has been described and by stakeholders alike, and it says the latest thing, according to Right Honorable Thomas Tab Tayebwa of Uganda, he said that it's one of, in one of the sessions that African values cannot be exchanged for Europe, European funding. Let's take a listen from him and we're back to have Karanja react to this before he disappears. Thank you very much. Uh, I give the floor now to Honorable Akello to Uganda. Two minutes and a half. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'm the one who appointed Honorable Akello, and she said that I should uh, pass on her question, but she's not here. Uh, Mr. Chairman, our concern as the Uganda is on the process, which is always followed before making all these commitments. For example, on human rights, because some of us, we do want our societies to be considered when you're defining some of these aspects. For example, in Uganda, issues of LGBT and homosexuality, I can tell you, and uh, abortion are issues that can never be accepted and we shall not pass laws which we shall be uh, around them. If people do want to be uh, homosexuals or what, we don't have a problem. Let them go and have their life. But promotion of that in our country can never be accepted. And then when I heard someone saying that these are human rights which you must be respected, they are universal. I just want to assure you, they can never, they can never. So what does it help for you to sign an agreement which we can never domesticate? If you went and talked to our ambassador, our minister, and you made resolutions. I'm the deputy speaker of parliament. I can assure you the parliament I, I lead will never pass laws that are going to be against our values. And I received one of the packs from Renew Europe and they had written on values not for sale. African values can never be exchanged for European funding. That one can never. So I request that we define human rights so that we know the boundaries. Human rights, we don't involve issues of LGBT. We don't involve issues of abortion because that is on the core of the African culture and society. I thank you. Thank you very much, colleague. And now our last speaker in the list, it's uh, Honorable. Ugandan parliamentarian, they're speaking unequivocally that his nation can never um, align with something inimical to its culture and its beliefs. Well, don't forget, it comes with a price when you stand up to uh, the powers that be. And recently, we've, we've seen how Uganda has been slammed with sanctions. And the likes of the Bretton Woods, um, global lender IMF saying they are not lending to U Uganda. So this comes with a price. It comes with arm um, twisting. And I, I come to you, Karanja, uh, the question about these packs that, you know, Africa, you know, th these nations, um, European Union looks to sign up with Africa, especially when Africa has something going like the, the African Continental Free Trade Area, the, the AFCFTA, which has not been able to get off the ground because of, you know, interference, you know, of course, interests from different, different climes. What can you say to this, you know, based on what has happened? It seems uh, Uganda has been somewhat isolated. You know, we should be having other African nations stand up, you know, against all of these. So uh, I, I view this as I think you may have uh, gathered from my presentation earlier. I view this extremely differently. 
Uh, first of all, Uganda not getting loans from the IMF uh, is probably a good thing. They have no business. We have no business dealing with the IMF. Quite frankly, we have no business dealing with uh, any of the organizations that were constructed at the height of colonialism in the 1940s. That include the IMF, the World Bank, the United Nations. Uh, none of these organizations were created with us in mind. They were not Actually, they were created with us in mind. They were created with us in mind to ensure that after these people handed over the so-called reins of uh, independence, that um, because they realized that uh, physical uh, domination of our countries was not was not going to continue being tenable because there were the uh, independence wars at the time. The Mau Mau were active uh, and there were other independence wars in Algeria, for example. So they recognized that that was not going to continue being tenable. And by the way, uh, and I think I've listed the blueprint of colonialism by Machiavelli, uh, I'll repeat it very quickly. It has four stages, four simple steps, which is first you come in with your uh, armies and administrators um, and brutalize the society and demoralize them and subjugate them into, um, you know, becoming um, uh, subdued. Second, you train, you, you create an elite class. Um, third, you hand over colonialism and you remove your, you, you hand over the reins of political uh, or what looks like government power um, and withdraw your administrators and your police forces and your armies. And then fourth, which is the stage that we are currently in, we are at the fourth stage of colonialism, is after, this is, this is all in a blueprint written by Machiavelli in The Prince. Um, the fourth stage is economic exploitation. So after you withdraw your police and your forces and your administrators, it is actually the most lucrative um, uh, part of um, colonialism because at that point, uh, you're no longer incurring the cost of paying administrators, govern the queen's governors, the queen's police and forces. You're no longer uh, paying um, administrators on the ground. So uh, all you're doing is reaping from the spoils of colonialism. <clears throat> So we have no business dealing with these organizations because that's what they were built to do. The UN is the other uh, PR arm of imperialism uh, and the IMF and the World Bank. They come in pretending to be uh, bringing goods, to be bringing goodies, uh, but in reality, all they do is ensure the dominance of the dollar and ensure the dominance of uh, the, Euro, the Euro. And I don't see these... Uh, cultural fights that are being uh, inserted into our politics as anything different than that. It is a continuation. Uh, please tell me where it is on the African continent where we are having um, gay, gay, gay rights marches. Where is it in the Af on the African continent? Are we having um, you know, widespread transgender operations happening. We don't even have the funds to have, you know, we don't have the, the healthcare facilities to even offer basic health um, to, to, to our children and, 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 our, and our families. So these are fights that do not belong on our continent. We are not having gay marriage anywhere on the African continent. So we have to be very wary of the of any of these Greeks come, coming bear claiming to bear gifts, including the likes of your other guests today, who come here uh, suggesting concern for Africa, and and and, and I, I find it laughable that the right might uh, somehow uh, express concern about immigration, about Africans being denied immigration because they don't, they're, they're the ones who have been pushing an anti-immigrant agenda. So you have to be very careful. Georgia Meloni, for example, uh, has come out looking like this um, um, champion for African rights and, 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 and ownership of our um, resources. But meanwhile, um, uh, Italy has soldiers in Niger, just as France does. Uh, she, you, you would never know that that is the case when you hear her speeches. So we have to be very careful. We do not respond to absolutely everything. And what we are doing when we respond to these poison pills of LGBT rights and, and all of these other cultural issues being thrown into 
um, our agreements and treaty agreements, when we start to respond to them, we are just biting the bait. And then we are starting to have these discussions and, and, um, and, and, and debates about things that are just simply not issues on our continent. We need to be focused on the economy. I'm not going to be drawn into having discussions about gay rights and abortion rights and, and reproductive health and, and sexuality have, because we are just not an issue. Yeah, if, if I may complete, they are just yeah, not an issue on our continent.